If you're not in Masters, you need to work on your combos. When you have better execution, you'll be able to do better combos. With better combos, you'll be able to close out more rounds. The more rounds you close out, the more matches you win. It's dead simple. Knowing that you should work on your execution is one thing, but knowing how to work on your execution is the most important part. A very common problem that most new players have is canceling Crouching Medium Punch into Super, or how to do Light Ten Senrin into level 3. The secret is, most of the time you don't have to input things incredibly fast, rather you need to have cleaner inputs. By the end of this video, you'll have all the tools to be able to work on your execution. That will be the reason why you're stuck and your execution will not get better. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using the Hot 42 B16. You can use any input device you want. These tips will still apply, but I'm trying to improve my execution on this, so that's what we're going to use for today. So first thing we want to do is to hit the start button, and we're going to scroll over till we find the screen display settings. Even though you have the hand cam, I'm still going to have the virtual controller on, but feel free to turn that off if you'd like. I want you to make sure you have input history display on. As we try to input, I want to make sure our inputs are clean on the left-hand side. And if your inputs look like this, well, we have some work to do, but we're going to get you right. The next thing we're going to do is hit the start button, and we're going to scroll over to environmental settings. We're going to turn the game speed on 50%, and this is the key. With the game on half speed, we can do the inputs as slow as possible. I want you to forget about speed. I want you to do the inputs as slow as possible and as clean as possible. If you look at our inputs over here, we have the DP motion, and that's absolutely fine. But if we look at our super input, we are missing a corner. And even though we got the super, that's what we want to clean up. And this is why I want to have the input display on so that you can see what you actually were doing. Let's first start off with crouching medium punch into super. With the game one half speed, I'm going to do this input as slowly and precisely as possible. Even though I didn't get the input, if you look, we have a crouching medium punch and quarter circle back, quarter circle back, punch. This is exactly what we want to see. We want to be able to see all the inputs cleanly and properly inputted. I want you to take a step back and make your win condition not getting the super, rather making sure the input is properly inputted. The reality is as speed increases, the chances of you doing it wrong increases. And I know many of you will be doing inputs like this. And even though you might get the input, it doesn't matter because you're not consistent. So after you practice this a few times and you have it down and you can sometimes get it fast enough to do the super off of the crouching medium punch. Naturally, as you get more clean with your inputs, eventually the speed will come. As you improve, you'll start to realize it's almost impossible to screw up this input. The more clean you are with this input, you'll realize how much time you actually have to input this super. In Jury's level one, you can practice the other side without having to switch sides. As your input hygiene gets better, you'll realize you don't need to input this fast. You need to input this precisely. Everyone's going to say now, Kale, I can do it at 50%. No problem. I'm 100% at doing it at 50%. It's when I go into the regular speed where I can't do it all of a sudden. This is normal. And it's absolutely fine that you can't do it. Because as long as your inputs are clean, it doesn't matter that you're not getting it. It's more important to fail because your inputs are slower and clean rather than doing it fast and getting it 50% of the time. From here, what you want to do is start to build up speed without jeopardizing the cleanliness of your inputs. As a reminder, we want to change our win condition from getting the super at all costs to making sure we're doing the input cleanly regardless if we actually get a successful activation. And this is where people fail. They try to go from 50% to 100% and going straight to the level 2. I want you to keep doing as you're doing, making sure your inputs are clean and precise regardless of success. This is success. Crouching medium punch, quarter circle forward, quarter circle forward kick. This is what success is going to look like for a while. And as you go, something interesting is going to happen. Eventually, from time to time, you're going to get a successful activation. This is the key. I want you to hone in on what that successful activation feels like. And when you hit it, I want you to think about how it felt to do it and what your fingers were doing when you did it. Over time, your success rate is going to go up. And as you focus on doing the input, I want you to turn that speed knob just a little bit and see if you can maintain that same input cleanliness. And we're going to look to our left in the input history to make sure our inputs are remaining clean. At this point, everyone's going to tell you to switch sides and try it on the other side. But remember, it doesn't matter what side we're on because we have juries le level one. And we also have juries level two. So we technically don't have to switch sides. We could just switch what button we're using. We're now going to try to do it in a combo. And this is where people tend to get stuck. But sometimes you have to take a step back to move forward. Promise. Let's do standing medium punch, crouching medium punch, super. This is a staple in jury's combos. And sometimes you're going to use this to win the match. And if you mess it up, this could be the difference between winning a match and losing a match. Likewise, this is also how we're going to go into jury's feng shui engine. 
So with this new added input, we might find our inputs get sloppier because it's something completely new. Don't be discouraged. Having this one button in front changes how the combo feels completely. And this is normal. You might feel like this is the same combo, but that's the kicker. It's not the same combo at all. This is the perfect time to self-assess. If you can't do this combo with one button press for the standing medium punch and one button press for the crouching medium punch, then we need to work on that first. I want you to look at your inputs on the left side. If your inputs look like this, this is the reason why you're losing matches and this is the reason why you're dropping your combos. Even if your combos are successful, you're using way too much power and trying to get these combos by using this match technique that it's going to be really hard to be clean and trying to get your super out. Hell, I'm trying to use this and I'm having a really hard time. It's just too much for the body and it's just too hard to time things. So one button press. One, one. This is your goal. And once you have this down, I want you to add Go Osatsu. I want your hands to get used to going from standing medium punch, crouching medium punch into a quarter circle forward. Or use standing medium punch, crouching medium punch, medium fuha. Basically, we're training our hands to get used to doing this motion going from a button press to a quarter circle back or a button press to quarter circle forward. Because most of us can do crouching medium punch, quarter circle forward, but the timing between medium punches is gonna be harder when we have to add something at the end. Once we're at this point, there's one more thing we need to do before we can bring it all together. I don't want you to think about this in three moves. Medium punch, medium punch, super. I want you to think about this as two inputs. You have medium punch and crouching medium punch, super. So mentally, we should think about this as one and two. And if you're still having problems doing this, I want you to take it slowly and again, rethink what success feels like. It's going to feel like you're doing it incorrectly because you're not getting the success. But when we look at the inputs on the side, we'll see the inputs being clearly down, medium punch, quarter circle forward, quarter circle forward, kick. This is perfect. And the beautiful part is eventually you'll just start getting it more often. And with that positive reinforcement will come more confidence. And with that confidence, you'll feel more bold to go for it. I'm working on an executional barrier that I've had for a long time, and I'll show you what I mean by it. I have a hard time going from light kick to super, so this is what I've been using to get better at it. I'll be honest, I'm about 50% on this combo, and I can still stand to improve myself. I had to do the same thing that I'm preaching to you right now. Light kick and slowly do the input, but making sure I'm doing it correctly. To do this at regular speed, you have to do it really fast, and as your speed increases, your inputs get sloppier and sloppier. 50%, do it slowly, and make sure your inputs are proper. And now that I'm feeling confident, I'm going to change my speed from 50% to 100%. Now that I'm trying to do it, I'm realizing that my inputs are fast, but they're not clean. So, I'm going to do it slowly and make sure that my inputs are clean. Checking on the left side, quarter circle back, quarter circle back, punch. Perfect. Let's go back to 50% and make sure we still have the right idea about this input. As I increase the speed, I forgot what it felt like to do that input cleanly. All right, let's go back. I'm not going to break this down into one, two, three, four. I'm going to break this down into one, two, and then three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And once you get this down, combo roots that you never even thought of start to open up or combo routes that you thought were too possible that all of a sudden you need to hit it at that time are now possible. Using this trading strategy, let's go into 10 center and into level three. I'm gonna turn my camera off for a second. This combo is useless because it is the harder option to use and it actually does less damage than just using Go Osatsu. Using Go Osatsu at the end of your combo instead of light 10 center will always net you more damage, even if it's unenhanced. Just because this combo is unoptimal doesn't mean it's something that you shouldn't work on because if it's an input hurdle, we should try to get over that. Here's the problem. Going from the 10 center in motion to double quarter circle back is very difficult. And most people don't have the speed and the input cleanliness to do this properly. Going to 50% allows us more time to transition from DP to quarter circle back. And that's what we're gonna practice, the DP motion into quarter circle back. Try not to transition directly from the DP motion all the way to quarter circle back. Do the DP, leave a gap, and then do quarter circle back. So we're going to do DP, quarter circle back, and we're going to keep going until we get a feel for it. As we feel confident in transitioning from DP to quarter circle back, we can try to do a double quarter circle back. Since you don't have to cancel level three on the first hit, we have a lot of time to do this. I want to focus on two things, the gap in between those two inputs, and I want to focus on how it feels to do it. But the hard part will always be going from 50% back to standard. And we're not there yet. We want to maintain input cleanliness while not jeopardizing the speed just yet. Remember, there's two parts. 
how the flow of it feels, but also how that gap feels. We can slowly try to work that gap down to save some time. And that's the hard part, slowly whittling down that gap in between. I implore you to not be impatient. We might not getting a successful super. However, if we look at our inputs, we still are getting DP, quarter circle back, quarter circle back kick. We're doing it right. We're just not fast enough. So slowly work your speed up. Don't reduce the accuracy. Sometimes it feels like you lose the input. You've been doing it for so long that your hands are starting to get tired or your inputs are getting jumbled. Remember, we're training our fingers to do this very precise thing. So you want to make sure you're doing it precisely. This might feel like a step backwards, but this is actually a step forward. Because every time you go back to trying to do this, you get better at it. Increase the speed back to standard. For this, try not to spend too much time waiting for the 10 Senran to hit. Once you input the punch for the 10 Senran, you can start to transition to the quarter circle back. If you got this far, do the 10 Senran and then try to shorten that gap in between the 10 Senran and the quarter circle back. If we start to bring it together, it starts to feel like one motion. Going back to 50%, we should feel a lot more confident doing this input because we have the speed down now. Now that our input is cleaner, let's go back to 100%. Same as before, let's do it in a combo. We're going to do forward medium punch, 10 center in, and then cancel that to level three. There we go. Going from forward medium punch, 10 center in, we can actually start doing our double quarter circle back sooner. So technically, it should feel a little bit easier to do this. Let's do heavy punch and kinsatsu, forward medium punch, 10 center in, level three. This will be hard at first, but I want you to think about the gap in between the 10 Senran and the level three. That shouldn't change. That to me is the most important part. It doesn't matter that we're doing forward medium punch into 10 Senran because it's all about that gap. We should reset after the 10 Senran. Every time we do this after the 10 Senran, it should feel like we're stopping and then double quarter circle back in. I break this down into three sequences, the heavy punch and Kintatsu, the forward medium punch into 10 Senran, and then the level three. So for me, it goes one, two, three. One, two, three. I don't break break this down as in one, two, three, four, five. That's too much. One input, two input, three input. And with all these combos, I urge you to work these into your combo drills. Do a combo and make sure you can end on what you're trying to work on. Think about situations in which you would use these combos in your everyday matches. This will start making the connection between your hands and your brain and store that so that if you need to use it, you can pull it out. If you're at an execution hurdle, break down what you're trying to work on in these ways, and I promise you will get better at it. It might not be in a day, might not be in a week. It took me so long to get this down. I practice this almost every session, and I'm at the point now where I have a pretty good track record of being able to hit this. This legit took months and was worth it because now I have it for life. This is something that I will never forget, no matter even if Street Fighter 7 comes out. So if there's anything that you're having a problem with, break it down step by step and don't work on speed yet. Try to get clean with your inputs and the speed will come. If this video helped you at all, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you try this out and you get good results, let me know in the comment section below. These are questions I answer all the time on twitch.tv slash big nasty kill or here on YouTube. Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard. Hopefully, you'll join me on my next stream, and I hope the video on screen is something you're looking for. YouTube thinks so. Have a good one. Tell your loved ones that you love them, and I'll see you in the next video.